now instead of hearing Christopher Hitchens read Christopher Hitchens' words, you get uh, a Georgia voice. Uh, before I tell you what accent. Christopher Hitchens said, we've talked a great deal about Thomas Jefferson. But I did want to talk about another Thomas, the Thomas who created the name the United States of America. And that's Thomas Paine, and we have a poster here, Where is Thomas Paine? And I can see that poster. We need to talk about Thomas Paine, too. Thomas Paine was an extremely effective critic of uh, biblical Christianity, among other things. Christopher Hitchens, despite his glorious, wonderful British accent, is an American citizen. He's an American citizen by choice. He went to a great deal of trouble to become an American citizen. He's the author of many books. He's really good at titles. Maybe he didn't do the title. His book on uh, Mother Teresa, for example, is called The Missionary Position. <laughs> and his book on Thomas Jefferson is called The Author of America. Uh, and that, uh, I haven't actually read that book. I've read another, uh, he's also famous, of course, for writing God is Not Great, which I have read. But he's very proud of being an American citizen. He, I heard him speak not long after he became a citizen. He said, I am so pleased to be able to say, finally, my fellow Americans. Uh, so he's very proud of that. And uh, he was pleased to help us out with this. He really would have been here if he possibly could have. His birthday, by the way, is the 13th of April, which happens also to be Thomas Jefferson's birthday. And it also happens to be Madeline Murray O'Hare's birthday. And since she founded the American Atheist, and it was done right here in Austin, uh, I don't know when his birthday was, but anyway, uh, Thomas Jefferson, uh, Madeline Murray O'Hare, uh, and Christopher Hitchens were all born on the 13th of April. You have to worry about the calendar or something, but never mind. This is what Christopher Hitchens sent us, and I will do it as much justice as I can. He's, uh, he's not, I'll tell you right up front, he's not a fan of the Texas Board of Education. <laughs> We know of no spectacle more ridiculous or more contemptible than that of the religious reactionaries who dare to rewrite the history of our republic, or who try to do so. Is it possible that in their vanity and stupidity, they suppose that they can erase the name of Thomas Jefferson and replace it with the name of some faith-based mediocrity whose name is already a if so, we cheerfully resolve to mock them and give them the lie in their teeth. Without Thomas Jefferson and his Declaration of Independence, there would have been no American Revolution that announced universal principles of liberty. Without his participation by the side of the unforgettable Marquis de Lafayette, there would have been no French proclamation of the rights of man. Without his brilliant negotiation of the Louisiana Treaty, there would be no United States of America. Without Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, there would have been no Virginia statute on religious freedom and no basis for the most precious clause of our most prized element of our imperishable Bill of Rights, the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. We make no saint of Thomas Jefferson. We leave the mindless business of canonization and the worship of humans to the fanatics. But aware as we are of his many crimes and contradictions, we say with confidence that his memory and example will endure long after the moral pygmies who try to blot out his name have been forgotten. As Abraham Lincoln died, after a cowardly shot in the back from a racist traitor, Secretary of War Edward Stanton sighed and said, now he belongs to the ages. Or did he say, now he belongs to the angels? In a room full of highly literate and educated officers and physicians, in an age of photography and stenography, with newspaper presses around the corner on Pennsylvania Avenue, there was no agreement among eye and ear witnesses as to what Stanton had actually said. Those of us who write and study history are accustomed to its approximations and ambiguities. This is why we do not take literally the tenth-hand reports 
of frightened and illiterate peasants who claim to have seen miracles, or to have had encounters with messiahs and prophets and redeemers who were, like them, mere humans. This is why, also, we will never submit to dictation from those who display a fanatical belief in certainty and revelation. They try to tell us to do they try to tell us that to do otherwise is to collapse into relativism. But it is they who wish to promote the life and work of Jefferson Davis, an advocate of slavery, backwardness, treason, and disunion, to an equality with Lincoln, who suffered agonies of doubt, who never joined a church, who was born on the same day as Charles Darwin, and who introduced his colleagues to the work of Thomas Paine, you can raise your poster now. <laughs> and who was the last brave casualty of a war, a war begun by devout and fanatical Christians that preserved our union and in the end led to the striking of the shackles from every slave. It was inscribed in the documents of the Confederacy that the private ownership of human, human beings had a divine warrant, and so it did to the everlasting shame of those who take the Bible as God's word. It is notorious that the news of the Emancipation Proclamation was kept from the people of Texas and not celebrated until Juneteenth. There may be those in Texas now who believe they can insulate their state, a state that had its own courageous revolution, from the news of evolution and from the writing in 1786 of a constitution that refuses to mention religion except demarcating and limiting its role in the public square. But we promise them today that they will join their forerunners in the flat earth community and in the mad clerical clique of those who believe that the sun revolved around the earth. Yes, they will be in school books as a joke on the epic scale of William Jennings Bryan shall be fair and take care to ensure that their tale is told. As President Thomas Jefferson received a letter from a concerned group of Baptists in Danbury, Connecticut, these people were the objects of persecution and the victims of discrimination, and they beseeched Jefferson to uphold their liberties. Of whom were they afraid? It should be remembered and taught in our schools that these poor Baptists were afraid of the Congregationalists of, Con of Connecticut who subjected their fellow Christians to insult and insecurity. Thus, it was the secular and unbelieving Jefferson who insisted that by means of a wall of separation between religion and government, all faiths and communities could take shelter under the great roof of the godless Constitution. From that day to this, the only guarantee of religious pluralism has been a secular law. We inherited these principles and these freedoms, and we here highly resolve that we shall pass them on as we will pass on an undivided republic purged of racism and slavery to our descendants. The pop gun discharges of a few pathetic sectarians and crackpot revisionists are negligible and will be drowned by the mounting chorus that demands, Mr. Jefferson, build up that wall. Mr. Jefferson, build up that wall.